I'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you see any difference in these two images? Have you ever sat down, looked at a painting, and felt the raw human emotion behind every brush stroke? Or have you ever read a piece of writing that made you stop for a second and think, wow, a heart wrote this, a human heart. That heart pumped to form these words. But what does it mean when that heart is replaced with a machine? I'm only 14 years old, but just like everyone here today, I am living and growing in an age of technological advancement. Generative artificial intelligence across the arts has been a tool decades in development, where its true capabilities are only just starting to be revealed. I'm here today to discuss the potential changes these tools may bring. Now, back to these two images behind me. Have you figured it out yet? This is a comparison I've made between an AI's painting and one done by my very own older sister. Fascinating, isn't it, how they can both be perceived? World-altering, catastrophic, life-changing. All buzzwords used in the media to portray these tools. But what does any of it mean? What is generative AI and why? Why is it completely abolishing the way we view art as a society? To give a straight definition, to which I'm sure most of you are aware of, generative AI tools are technological tools used to generate text, images, or other media done through the process of databases. Therefore, meaning machine learning is nothing more than a set of algorithms having the capability to pick up on human patterns and mimic them. They say mimicry is the sincerest form of flattery. I'm sure everyone here has wanted to be someone else at one point. And the main goal in copying that person was to become a better version of them. That's what I believe AI and the thousands of companies behind it are currently trying to do, trying to become better, more efficient versions of humans. Quite a scary concept, isn't it? Look around you. Technology is developing at a rapid pace. And inevitably, AI will reach the level to which we cannot contain it. You might say, oh, that's, much <clears throat> that's much too far in the future. And you'll brush off this silent, gradual removal with one simple phrase. I can always tell when something is AI generated. Of course, you start to feel that strange, dreadful cloud of uncertainty when we stare at an AI-generated image for far too long. But as I previously mentioned, these bots are only continuing to develop. So what happens when that cloud disappears? And is it already starting to dissipate? Many studies show that humans all across the world are unable to, to distinguish between AI and human art. And this is an ever-growing epidemic. When fine-tuned, these machine tools could form flawless, realistic artwork in the click of a button. Each and every stroke could be perfect. Every line could be straight. And that's the point we would need to start wondering, why is it we even make art? In its most reduced form, we make art to entertain and to connect. But if, for example, an AI-generated story could be just as or even more entertaining than one crafted by a soul, then would we detest it? And if we can't tell the difference, what truly is the difference? Although, we as, we as a human's kind are not stationary beings. We adapt. Our minds will always be filled with clouds of new ideas. So AI should not stop us from creating. We'll always be one step ahead. And there shouldn't be a world where AI can completely kill all artists, but it has the ability to severely reduce the number of people creating. Use this as an example. These are all watercolor paintings generated by an algorithm. What happens when a newly emerging beginner watercolor artist sees this? They'll see this algorithm do what they want to do better and more efficiently. And the most likely scenario is they'll think to themselves, 
Why would I want to do something I know a piece of technology can do better than me? What is the point? And it doesn't just end there. Why would a journalist spend hours searching for proper sources for their articles when a bot can do that in seconds? Why would a screenwriter spend months hunched over a laptop trying to form an entertaining script when a bot can make 24 in that time? Personally, I have never been much of an artist, but my older sister paints, and she does it with a level of skill I'll never fully comprehend. I've witnessed her spend hours leaned over a canvas, getting every detail to sit right, and that compelled me to truly ponder the effects of AI. As I watched her paintbrush move, I thought to myself, how could such a beautiful process ever be replaced by machinery? AI must be evil, but we know that's not tr true. And I cannot stand here today and lecture to you that these bots are the purest form of evil, because we know that's not true. And I can't tell you all the negatives of these tools, because we as a species are accustomed to finding the negative things. So let's look on the bright side of these developments and find a solution. Our lives are filled with mundane and repetitive tasks. And AI helps with that. So these tools need to exist. They're immensely in demand. And AI is a brand new, innovative concept that is changing the world as we speak. So we cannot write it off as merely ruining our lives. In a world where time is our most valuable resource, AI helps us to use that resource and get rid of these tasks. In my opinion, the human mind is a machine in itself, one that doesn't run on ones and zeros, but on thoughts and emotions. And just like any other computer, the human mind has a certain amount of storage. The less of this cognitive space is wasted on these mundane tasks, the more room there is for creativity. However, with all these positives and negatives, we must remember every single thing in the universe comes with a balance. We need to approach AI not as something to rely on, but something to help us to develop even more. There is not a single solution to all these issues that surround these tools, but there's a few that we could discuss. On many popular social media platforms, any AI-generated content must be marked with a special tagging showing it is of this nature. This prevents both the threat of lying, deceitfulness, and legal action. On the topic of legal action, did you know that the United States Copyright Office does not recognize AI art as copyrightable? It's not human enough. I propose that some form of copyright system be set in place so that people using this art must disclose it to the public. In the end, everything I've said boils down to one thing, our future. No matter what path these tools take, they're going to play a substantial role in our future. So I leave you with my final statement. AI only has the power we give it. The more dependency we build on these tools, the more they'll take over our lives. I can't stand here today on this stage and preach to you that these bots are ruining our lives. But what I can ask you to do is to open your eyes and look as far as you can and see how detrimental our current course of action could truly be to the delicacy of our art. And remember one thing, AI is not a crutch, it is a tool for improvement. Thank you.